So this week, the Biden-Harris port envoy, John Picari, announced he would be leaving his position in March to make way for the new Federal Office of Multimodal Freight, Infrastructure, and Policy. But what is this office? What will it do? Details are scarce in the news. So we dive into it here. Hi, welcome to By Land and By Sea, an attorney breaking down the week in supply chain. I'm Lauren Began, founder of Squall Strategies, a maritime legal consulting company, and I'm your favorite maritime industry LinkedIn Live host. Join me every week as we walk through both ocean transport and surface transport topics in the wild world of supply chain. As always, the guidance here is general and for educational purposes only. It should not be construed to be legal advice. There's no att attorney-client privilege created by this video. If you need an attorney, contact an attorney. So before we get into the newly created office, let's go through my top three stories of the week. Top three stories of the week. <laughs> Number one, the advance notice of proposed rulemaking released by the FMC, the Federal Maritime Commission, was published in the Federal Register this week, which means the comments due date is now set. March 17th, easy to remember, St. Patrick's Day. Not sure what an ANPRM is, the Advanced Notice of Proposed Rulemaking, the initial steps of a rulemaking released by the Federal Maritime Commission, this initial steps phase, they're requesting feedback from the industry on detention and demerge practices. Now, if you joined me last week or you've followed me on LinkedIn, I've released a few videos on this. Um, I've also made some LinkedIn posts on this. I strongly encourage anyone who deals with detention and or demerge to consider filing comments. Like I said, this is the initial stage for a rulemaking. They really want to know what the industry has to say. They're looking for guidance here. You know, I even have a post on suggestions for filing comments, like a how-to. Go check it out. I'll post it in the link. I'll link all of that here. And as always, if you'd like assistance or more information, you can reach out to me at my company, Squall Strategies, or on LinkedIn. Story number two. The Federal Maritime Commission's Chairman Dan Maffei had some strong words this week for Peer Pass and called for an impromptu FMC Commission meeting. The meeting has been set. It's scheduled for February 25th, and it is going to be in closed session. They'll be reviewing the amendment filed by the West Coast Marine Terminal Operators Agreement, WIC Matoa, you may have heard it called, that would make permanent the off-peak gate use incentive program. So I'll say that again, the off-peak gate use incentive program, middle of the night using the gates, that expired on January 1st, 2022. The fees purportedly rake in millions of profits paid for by the American importer. And as Chairman Maffei said, today it collects a traffic mitigation fee that mitigates no traffic. Purportedly, it pays for Wikmatoa's members to provide off-peak gate options. However, Peer Pass's operations are so opaque that it is unclear to me that it provides any public benefit that would justify its antitrust exemption. That's pretty clear and pretty direct from Chairman Maffei. Stay tuned, we'll, we'll keep following that story. Story number three, final story of the week that I wanna cover here. Digitization is on the move. CMA CGM announced this week a reefer tracking system for refrigerated containers, reefer containers. In their announcement, they stated that you can track the position and status of your reefer good and ensure they travel in optimal conditions. This is great. Monitor the status and conditions of your reefer in real time. Receive key data such as location, temperature, and gas variations, and set up notifications to detect possible anomalies and quickly implement corrective measures. That is, that's great for reefers, for reefer containers. CMA CGM also mentioned that they can also track your dry container. You can track the position of your dry container both at sea and on land, and you can be alerted to the intensity of possible shocks, the opening and closing of container doors, and the temperature variations outside. Folks, it's a brave new world. This is great news. Also announced this week on the, on the digitization side of things, Google Cloud and Dun and Bradstreet have announced a 10-year strategic agreement to co-develop software and services around supply chain and visibility and other business issues. Now, this is something I can get behind. Imagine being able to have suggestive routing, higher efficiencies in booking. You could essentially Google Maps your trip. What if you could share your cargo's ETA? 
The possibilities are endless, and I am so here for this. This is great news. I, you know, I love to see digitization in the industry. I think that we're, we're all in an email world. We're all online. It makes sense that we move our paper-based industry into the online world that we're also part of. And, you know, I said that it was top three, but I'm going to have a bonus item here. The FMC has a new commissioner, v Max Vekic. He's from the Pacific Northwest and has strong ties to labor. We look forward to watching him settle into his new role at the FMC. More to follow on that as we learn more about him. But it's exciting to see the, the new commissioner come in. Um, you know, it was former chairman. Um, it was a uh, former chairman. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten his name, <laughs> um, Mike Corey, who was um, the outgoing commissioner here. Um, he was former chairman, and, and most recently he was a commissioner. Um, he's been there for quite a long time, and he did wonderful things when he was at the FMC. I'm so sorry, commissioner, former chairman, um, Michael Corey, but to forget your name, but I think you're great. Um, I, you know, you, you did a great job while you were there, and I really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> fair season, fair winds and following seas. If you didn't know, I have a little bit of a head cold, so I'm a little off today, so apologies. No, not a good excuse, but apologies. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of the day. The Biden-Harris administration's port envoy, John Picari, announced this week that he will be stepping down in March. John has been acting as a liaison between the administration and the supply chain industry, specifically the port of LA and Long Beach. We've, we've heard about him in the news and is credited with facilitating the dwell fee charges that were introduced late 2021. A fee that's actually never been assessed, but rather the threat of the fee is being cheered across the industry or, or certainly across some news channels as the reason for the on-terminal volume reduction at LA Long Beach. Um, he's predicating his departure on the creation of a new federal office of policy, the Federal Office of Multimodal Freight Policy. So prior to diving into this issue, I found that the details of this office in the news were pretty scarce. It was unclear whether this office, where it would be housed. You know, I had heard both Department of Transportation and Department of Commerce. Um, it was unclear what the authorities would be. Would it be a promotional agency with grant money to distribute? Would it be a regulatory agency charged with regulating the industry? And, you know, I mean, if it was regulatory, how would it be discerned from the Federal Maritime Commission, who, as we all have talked about, is the regulatory agency for kind of the ocean side of things? Um, you know, there was also potentially an overlap with the Surface Transportation Board. It was it wasn't really clear what what was going on with this office. And so I thought, let's dive into it. Let's cover it with by land and by sea. So let's start at the beginning. How was the Federal Office of Multimodal Freight Infrastructure and Policy created? Well, we go to the law. It was created under the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, passed by Congress November 15th, 2021. This was the big infrastructure package that went through at the middle of November. And here's the answer. It will be housed at the U.S. Department of Transportation under Secretary Pete Buttigieg. There we go. We have it. We know where it's going to live. So what will this office do? You know, that's that's just as important of, of where it will live. The law that was passed lists it out. It lists out a whole bunch of purposes for this office of freight, which is what they're calling it in this law, the shorthand of it, the office of freight. So what are these purposes? It's to carry out the national multimodal freight policy to administer and oversee certain multimodal freight grant programs. You heard that grant money? To promote and facilitate the sharing of information between the private and public sectors with respect to freight issues, which is similar to what um, John Picari has been doing. He's been kind of the liaison between private and public sectors um, and, and kind of the multimodal piece of it. Um, the office is also charged with conducting research on improving multimodal freight mobility and to oversee the freight research activities of the various agencies within the department to assist cities and states in developing freight mobility and supply chain expertise, to liaise and coordinate with other federal departments and agencies, and to carry out any other duties as prescribed as DOT secretary. You know, I, I always like to see that because that means that as it gets implemented into the world, into the office of DOT, if things come up in the meantime that need a little bit of a, of a you know, of a change, maybe a little bit of a tweaking, the DOT secretary is, is authorized to do that. So tell me more. What about these policies and programs? 
the past law does just that. It tells you more. So administration of policies and programs. The freight office will develop and manage the National, Stra National Freight Strategic Plan, the National Multimodal Freight Network. They'll oversee the development and updating of the state freight plans and provide guidance or best, <clears throat> excuse me, best practices relating to the development and updating of state freight plans. They'll also administer multimodal freight grant programs and establish procedures for analyzing and evaluating applications for grants. Under these programs, this means money. This means money is going to be injected into the multimodal freight. I mean, if you didn't already know that was coming, with all the attention that's been on supply chain and how it's really been contributing to a lot of kind of successive problems that we're seeing as a nation, getting a handle on this multimodal supply chain is so important. And so I wasn't, I wasn't too surprised to see that grant programs were going to be included with this office. Um, and, and obviously the establishing the procedures for analyzing and evaluating the applications for grants. So everybody out there that's in supply chain, stay tuned. This is going to be interesting to see what types of grants and how this is going to be different than, um, you know, some of the grants that's already, that are already available from the Department of Transportation. You know, more money into the industry. I think we all can agree. Infrastructure in general, true infrastructure can always use more money and can always use updating. You know, as we use the cranes, they break down. As we use the highway system, it breaks down. We need money to keep these things up. We've been a wonderful country of creating the infrastructure, but we need to be a little bit better at maintaining it. Um, and so, you know, the, hopefully this office will help to alleviate some of those problems that happen. It'll also assist states in the establishment of freight state freight advisory committees and multi-state freight mobility compacts. So essentially what they're saying is that states need to have advisory committees here. States need to also take responsibility for some of the multimodal. I'm gonna stop there, multimodal, what, what does that mean? All the different modes, obviously. I mean, that's, that's an obvious thing to say, but so what does that mean? That's air, that's rail, that's surface transport, that's trucking, that's maritime, that's short sea shipping, you know, shipping through the, the rivers and the inland system, but also, um, you know, the, the ports, anywhere that freight is going is part of this multimodal. Um, this office will also provide data to the Bureau of Transportation Statistics regarding freight data and planning tools. Um, that's a U.S. office, U.S. Bureau, that really does try to monitor um, transportation statistics across the board so that we can, you know, data is power. So great, a new office, but who's gonna be in charge? The law describes that as well. Aren't you glad you had a lawyer describe all of this to you today? <laughs> so the freight office will be led by an assistant secretary for multimodal freight, who will be appointed by the president, but will have to have advice and consent of the Senate. And also the law outlines that they'll have to have professional standing and demonstrated knowledge in the field of tr freight transportation. Um, obviously that's subjective, you know, that's going to be open to interpretation, but I like that they call that out as they want somebody who is from the industry or who knows um, professional standing and demonstrated knowledge of the industry. Um, appointed by the president with advice and consent of the Senate, that's pretty normal. That's pretty much what all politicals go through. Um, you know, all five of the commissioners go through the same thing, the FMC commissioners, they will be appointed by the president with advice and consent of the Senate. Um, we've heard that with actually the, the new um, FMC commissioner, Max Vekic, he just went through his Senate hearings and that's why he um, was just uh, sworn in because he had passed through his Senate hearings. So um, duties of this office, are going to be uh, duties of this person um, in charge of this office will be reporting to the Undersecretary for, of Transportation for Policy and be responsible for the management and oversight of the activities of the office, obviously. Um, they'll also be charged with working with the modal administrations of the U.S. Department of Transportation to encourage multimodal collaboration. You know, I, I, I want to pause there. So they're working with the modal administration. So basically, they're going to be working with all of the other departments within Department of Transportation. So that includes aviation, you know, FAA. That includes rail, uh, surface transport, uh, surface transportation board. Um, that includes some of the, um, you know, highway and, and maritime, maritime administration. So now there will be a dedicated person who's kind of in charge of collaborating among all of those different modes. I think that's a good idea. 
So this next part that I came across, though, in, in reading of the law was really interesting to me. So in order to staff and fund this office, the freight office is allowed to steal from other offices. So in the text, it addresses it. The elimination of other DOT offices. <laughs> the DOT secretary may consolidate into the freight office any office or office function within DOT that the secretary determines has duties, responsibilities, resources, or expertise that supports the purpose of the freight office. The DOT secretary may eliminate when purposes of the office are duplicative of the purposes of the freight office. So as DOT secretary, uh, Secretary Pete Buttigieg, is looking at and creating this office, he can pull from other offices. If he thinks that there's, you know, double efforts, if he thinks that there's maybe a, a subdivision of another mode um, that would be better suited kind of in this collective office, he can pull and he can he can shift that around. Kind of interesting. Um, probably not too unique to this situation, but it's pretty interesting to, to see it all laid out there. Um, so that also goes for staffing of the freight office. The DOT secretary, Pete Buttigieg, will ensure that the freight office is adequately staffed and funded by transferring of positions to the freight office as you know here's the qualifier as long as it doesn't adversely affect the previous office that it was stolen from um, and i say stolen i mean you know it's 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 moving around this is probably pretty normal um, funding of the freight office it looks like from the language of the text that the dot secretary may also transfer funds um, from the eliminated or otherwise <laughs> a nicer way of putting it otherwise streamlined offices <laughs> So, um, you know, the, the funding, I, I'll, I hope to see a dedicated funding source at some point to this office, but I do like the, the point of, you know, cleaning up house, reviewing what you have over at DOT already and seeing where you can streamline because you don't want double, triple efforts on, on the same issue, um, especially since this is going to be kind of a synthesizing of the different modes office. I like to see that they are going to be reshuffling where appropriate. And because this is a government of the people, they will create a website to let us know what they're up to. Um, <laughs> under the text of the law, the freight office is actually required to create a website. Love to see it. Of course they would be, but I love to see it in the law there. I'm gonna be interested to see when that website hits the, hits the interwebs. The Department of Transportation Secretary, Pete Buttigieg, shall make publicly available on the DOT website, a freight office website that outlines both the programs managed or made available by the freight office and the eligibility requirements of the, those programs. So like I said, this means grant money. So the grants that will be managed by this office will be on that website and the eligibility requirements of those programs will also be on that website. Not uncommon, just great to see it called out. Okay, so great. So this office is created. Will Congress check back in on them? You betcha. <laughs> Accountability to Congress. One year after the creation of this office, they are to report back to the Senate Commerce, Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation, and the House Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, or the TNI Committee. So what information will they need to provide when they check back in? Where they consolidated those offices that we talked about? And why they consolidated them? And actually, the number of positions eliminated or moved, um, you know, as as they're reshuffling the house, they want to check back in and, and make sure kind of check the check their work, see that they weren't eliminating offices or positions or divisions that really were kind of needed to be standalone areas. Um, and maybe they'll be also suggesting some other areas where they could continue to eliminate or consolidate the offices. They're also going to have to check back in on the programs and activities of the office and their status, um, the number of employees that are actually working in the office now. So I mean, currently that's zero, um, but that will grow. And um, the total number of employees expected to ultimately join the office. Um, so, you know, after one year, they're probably not going to be up to full capacity, full power. Um, so that as they create this office, they want to know, well, how many do you think that you'll need to fully adequately staff this office? So there you have it. It looks like it'll be a grants research liaison office that will generally oversee, but without regulatory and actual oversight authority, the multimodal freight system. So some of the questions that I had are actually answered here, uh, both black and white in the text and also kind of reading between the lines. 
Um, the office will be located in the U.S. Department of Transportation under Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Um, we've heard a lot about him. He has been really diving in. Um, you know, we, we've seen him quite a few places. He was out in L.A. recently, um, L.A. Long Beach. He's been in the news talking about it. He actually has some pretty interesting things to say on the trucker side and, and his um his plans to try to clean up the trucker experience and, and the need that we have to clean up the trucker experience. Um, but so the office will be located in U.S. Department of Transportation. The office will be responsible for grants administration, as we talked about. So grants equals money. Um, they're going to be responsible for coordination of state multimodal freight plans and committees, um, including cross state plans when applicable. So, you know, they're, they're going to be states will have their own um, plans and committees, but this will help synthesize and, and maybe coordinate um, and, and make sure that everybody's on the same page when they start looking at these uh, multimodal freight plans. Um, the office will also be overseeing research to better understand the multimodal freight and best practices. I think that that's going to be interesting. I think it's good to approach research and, and kind of facilitate and foster research because you'll only keep getting better finding out what else is out there. Um, you know, if you're only dedicated to implementation and, and not the research side of things, um, then you're going to get lost and you're not going to actually see the larger picture. So I see that as a great way for this office to see the larger picture and be more informed when they come to these committees, um, these state committees or these cross state plans. Um, and when they're doing this liaising, um, you know, being the go between, being the liaison between different areas, they'll be a little bit more informed as an office. Um, and like I said, they're, they're also just going to be generally a, a liaison office. So mirroring a little bit what Port Envoy John Bakari has been doing um, with his public and private stakeholders, you know, working where where there are trouble spots in the industry. I think that this person, this office will um, try to help facilitate when things get really sticky without having to stand up a, an entirely new area or an entirely new per person. Um, you know, it's, it's nice to kind of have this rooted in congressional authority and um, with some clear directives and some clear oversight. You know, I think that all that is important. Um, you know, it, it was important to get people on the ground right away um, when everything started to, to break down. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm cautiously encouraged here. So what we have now is a whole bunch of transportation modes, specific offices. So like I said, we have aviation, air, maritime, mostly brown water as opposed to the blue water, um, which is kind of inland versus international. FMC kind of covers the blue water side of it. Um, we have rail, we have a little bit of truck, uh, but since it's a pretty deregulated sector of the industry, um, but we didn't really have a come together moment. And as we see in the industry, all of these modes are working alongside each other. Um, I'll say that again, as we see in the industry now, all of these modes are really working alongside each other. Um, we've all seen that as the industry is a little siloed. And so without a clear directive to work together, um, maybe without a, a bad guy that we're all working against this congestion problem, um, you know, this is this will be nice to have a dedicated office that will help bring all of this together and, and help break down those silos. Um, sure, there were ways that these different areas, these different modes would overlap, but to have this dedicated office that ensures cooperation between the offices is important at the federal level. Um, you know, as it as it trickles down into the boots on the ground, boots on the docks, um, you know, boots on the pedals, <laughs> um, it, you know, that that's where the industry will kind of meet the federal government on this. But it'll be nice to at least have that perception, that intention of a collaborative working environment up at the Department of Transportation level for a full office that's dedicated to that. So as with everything though, it's all about the people they choose to staff and lead the office. Um, so I said, I'm cautiously optimistic here. I'm cautiously encouraged. Uh, you know, I, I think that this will be nice. I like that they're shifting and reevaluating the offices that they currently have. So they're not just jam packing more offices into the Department of Transportation. Um, you know, I think duplicity is is can be troublesome, especially when it comes to regulatory. Um, maybe not as troublesome with grants. We can put more grant money out there. But remember, it's all tax dollars. So questions on this, um, questions on, on this office or questions about anything today, please feel free to contact me at Squall Strategies. Um, again, this guidance here is general and for educational purposes. It shouldn't be construed to be legal advice directly related to your matter. If you need an attorney, contact an attorney. So this is Lauren Began, and you've just listened to By Land and By Sea. We'll see you next time.